doing on the internet, streaming stuff, showing stuff, displaying stuff publicly. Nick's motion, if it was taken by attorneys around the US, could be used to completely stop trial coverage. So here we are. This is a, uh, a motion by the attorney for Nicholas Robert Raketa. Now, what they are trying to do here is they are trying to quash or destroy or suppress a motion by one Joshua Moon. No, but uh, but to be serious, uh, Josh had his uh, attorney uh, reach out uh, actually to me, and I, I filed the affidavit on this as well, um, giving a motion to allow for audio and video recording because it is under certain conditions presumptively allowed, right? If you meet certain basic conditions, you have to allow this uh, in uh, Minnesota. Um, so Nick is filing this motion, right? in response, but the response is, we want to hide this. So the motion is submitted in response to Joshua Moon's motion for an order of this court permitting the audiovisual recording and broadcasting of all future proceedings in this matter. The defendant objects to the audio and video recording of all future proceedings in this matter and requests the court deny it in its entirety. Particularly offensive because they're saying under no conditions, under no conditions, uh, can this be allowed to slide, right? That's ridiculous. Are there not things the court could do to accommodate for any concerns? Yes, of course there are. So they're going to bring up a lot of things in here. And these are things that they brought up before, which are bullshit. Bullshit arguments like the children, like think about the children. Well, pause. If the children were forced to testify in his criminal case, which they shouldn't be, and by the way, the filming is really only related to the criminal side, not really the child custody side, right? But his kids are not expected to be witnesses. And even if they were, that part wouldn't be recorded. It simply wouldn't because they're children. So as it is, as the law stands, at period, that would not be recorded. So... The only way, and by the way, the only way the children get called, the only way that Nick's children get on the stand is if Nick and Kayla put them there. So unless Nick and Kayla are winning mother and father of the century by not only having one of their kids test positive for cocaine, but also by putting their kid on the stand, then they're not even, then there's no way they're even relevant to this at all. Josh says um, that through his counsel, uh, authorizing either himself or a professional videographer or a Minnesota attorney to record the proceedings. Moon avers, avers is a great word, to be the sole member of a limited liability company which operates the website known as Kiwi Farms. He is the person who runs Kiwi Yes, he's the person who operates Kiwi Farms. Mr. Moon's asserted that Kiwi Farms is an internet forum that promotes commentary and discussion of noteworthy events. Included with and in support of Mr. Moon's motion and affidavit were a number of communications to and from Kandiyohi County Sheriff's Office, which Mr. Moon's counsel averted he received in response to his Government Data Practices Act request. Counsel declared that the, due to the volume of material response to his request and the late delivery of the media, he had not had the time to thoroughly review the records released by the sheriff and what they contained. On August 7th, Mr. Boone's counsel noticed that the court and the parties that Oliver Bromka, a licensed attorney in Minnesota, had volunteered to audio and video to record them on behalf of Mr. Moon. Mr. Bromka's affidavit informed the court that he is a learned attorney licensed in good standing in the state of Minnesota. You lead with your strongest arguments. So, so his strongest argument is that the guy who was going to videotape it misspelled or typoed his bar. That's his strong argument. The law. Counsel for Mr. Moon cited the applicable rule. I'll buy it incompletely. Oh, look at that. The 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 cope. Uh, counsel cited to impart the language of uh, Minnesota rule of general practice writing in criminal proceedings uh, occurring before a jury plea may be accepted and uh, may be accepted or a guilty verdict may be returned. A judge may authorize the visual or audio recording and reproduction of appropriate court trial proceedings unless there's substantial likelihood that the coverage would expose any victim or witness who may who may testify at trial to harm, threats of harm, or intimidation to determine whether to grant a request for visual or audio recording and reproduction. The presiding judge may consider any relevant 
factors, not in, including but not limited to, the positions of the parties and the wishes of the victim, the level of public interest in the trial, the necessity of coverage to safeguard the defendant's right to public trial or the public's right of access to criminal trials, the existence of security issues, courtroom and facility limitations, or public health concerns, and courtroom facility limitations that would render coverage impractical, the positive or negative impact of recording or reproduction on the dignity and decorum of the trial proceedings, and the effect of recording and reproduction on transparency, public education, public trust, confidence in the proceeding, and the judicial system. Counsel omitted the final sentence, which reads, coverage under this paragraph shall be subject to the following limitations. Two such matters at a minimum are applicable. The first of which should this matter should not be dismissed prior to trial is uh, there shall be no visual or audio coverage of any witness, victim, or defendant who is a minor at a time of trial, right? Yeah, okay, right? And it is foreseeable because of the charge, the alleged uh, violation, uh, Minnesota Statute 607-378, uh, one or more of the witnesses called by the state will be a minor at the time of trial. Called by the state? Called by the state? No! No, the charge doesn't require the kid to testify. What the fuck are you talking about? A blanket order to permit the uh, audiovisual recording for all future proceedings is unwarranted. No, that's stupid. This is a stupid fucking argument. So they're trying to say the state's going to call the kid. Why would the, the state doesn't need to call the kid? The state has no reason to call the kid. They, don't, they can prove their case without ever calling the kid. If Nick is doing coke, in a house with a kid, the charge is going to be there, right? So he doesn't need his own kid. The only reason that they're going to testify is because I think Nick is going to call them to testify because Nick, just like with daddy who said Nick didn't do nothing, right? Which by the way, we're not covering it, but Nick's dad pretty much was like Nick in, in summary, Nick was a good boy. He didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing wrong, right? So daddy enabling a little bit here. There is a special significance upon information and belief. The first individual who sought information from Kenny O'Hee County, who identified himself as a volunteer member of the Kiwi Farms Reporting Forum, is John Close of 950 25th Street Northwest, apartment 1813N, Washington, D.C. Upon information and belief, John Close, in addition to being a volunteer member of the Kiwi Farms Reporting Forum. Okay, full stop. Nobody is the Nobody's going to say why they were well, like, oh, I'm a member of Kiwi Farms. The whole point of Kiwi Farms, they can be anonymous. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to being anonymous. The advantage is, is that you can say whatever you want to say pretty freely and, you know, nobody knows who you are. But the disadvantage is, is that people are going to be kind of skeptical of believing you because if at the end of the day, you can't put your identity out there in some way, shape or form, even if at least your face, right, you do have a little bit less uh, credibility. People don't identify with you. People don't uh, tend to view that you're uh, believable, right? As much if you're anonymous versus if you're, if you're not. Right. So, um, if this case grabs the attention of a convicted sex offender, so this guy is apparently a convicted sex offender, convicted of possession of CP cheese pizza in 2014, uh, so much that he appears to be the first person who sought information from Candy Yogi County Sheriff's office. The broadcast of these proceedings is fraught with perils. It places minor children of the defendant on display for John Close and other convicted, uh, sex offenders. So this does two things. First of all, it says that, you know, it kind of implies that all members of the Kiwi Farms are uh, sex offenders, right? That's the implication here. Nick's attorney is the one that did this docs, and Nick signed off on this. So I know some people are like, full docs, full docs. First of all, Nick's attorney did this. This is public record. So this is me showing what they filed as public record, okay? So let me just be very, very clear. This is, And this was filed as Exhibit A, okay? This is John Allen Close on the 900 block of 25th Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. You know, he was convicted of possession of CP in 2014, right? Um, and apparently this guy was like, I read some other places, he's like living on a park bench and, you know, he's got some other uh, issues here. Very, uh, very intriguing character. So this guy wrote to them. Uh, to the Candioe County uh, Sheriff's Office uh, in May to request this. Now, of course, that isn't the, I don't know when he says this is the first person to request stuff, but it's still, it's still very, very, very interesting. Now, my theory here was this, that either number one, 
uh, this person is like just some random weirdo super fan or number two. And this is the more weird part is that this is a, uh, an op 